Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel. Introduction to iSync's theory. Ever wondered why people behave the way they do? Could it be that our personality traits have a biological basis? Welcome to our exploration of Hans Ising's biological trait theory, a fascinating approach to understanding the complexity of human behavior. Hans Ising, a renowned psychologist, proposed that our personality traits are not just random quirks, but rather, they have deep-rooted connections to our biology. His theory suggests that the differences in our behavior, thoughts, and emotions can be attributed to different aspects of our personality structure, which in turn are deeply tied to our biological makeup. This theory has been instrumental in shaping modern psychology, providing important insights into why we act the way we do and how our personality is formed. It explores the interplay of biology and environment and the influence they have on our personality types. So, are you ready to delve deeper into this intriguing subject? Dive in as we unravel the mystery behind our varying personalities. Isink's approach to personality, Hans Isink, a renowned psychologist, believed that our personality is largely determined by our genetics. He proposed a fascinating approach to personality focusing on the biological basis. Isink viewed personality as largely rooted in our biology, with temperament being a key inherited trait. His theory suggests that our temperaments, the basic emotional style that affects our behavior, are biologically based and are part of our genetic makeup. Isink viewed these temperaments as a driving force behind our personality structure. According to him, these inherited temperaments influence how we react to the world around us, shaping our individual personalities. Isink's approach to personality is unique in its emphasis on the biological rather than environmental influences. This perspective shifted the focus of personality studies, highlighting the importance of our genetic makeup in defining who we are. This approach sets the stage for a deeper understanding of how our genetic makeup influences our personality. Structure of personality. I think proposed that personality is structured around two primary dimensions. These dimensions, like the poles of a globe, provide a way to map out the vast landscape of human personality. Let's delve into these dimensions and see how they interact. First, we have the extroversion-introversion axis. Picture this as a horizontal line with extroversion on one end and introversion on the other. Extroverts are those who are outgoing, social, and thrive on interacting with others. They tend to be assertive and love being the center of attention. On the other end of this spectrum, we have introverts. These individuals are more reserved, prefer solitude or small group interactions, and often engage in thoughtful contemplation. But remember, everyone is a mix of both to various degrees. It's not a binary, but a continuum. Now let's consider the second dimension, neuroticism stability. Imagine this as a vertical line crossing the first one right in the middle. Neuroticism refers to emotional instability, or how prone a person is to psychological distress. High levels of neuroticism can manifest as anxiety, moodiness, and emotional volatility. Conversely, stability or low neuroticism is characterized by emotional resilience and consistency. Again, this isn't a binary divide, but a spectrum, with each of us falling somewhere along the line. So how do these dimensions interact to form different personality types? Well, envision these axes crossing each other, creating four quadrants. Each quadrant represents a unique combination of extroversion or introversion and neuroticism or stability. For instance, an individual high in extroversion but low in neuroticism may be outgoing and emotionally stable, often seen as sociable and easygoing. On the other hand, someone high in both introversion and neuroticism might come across as reserved and somewhat anxious. By understanding these dimensions, we can begin to appreciate the complexity of human personality. It's not about labeling ourselves or others, but about understanding the diverse ways in which our personality traits can combine and interact. These two dimensions combine in unique ways to give us the diverse personalities we observe. With this framework, we can start to explore the intricate tapestry of human personality, appreciating its richness and diversity, personality types and their biological basis. Isink didn't stop at identifying these dimensions, he further linked them to our biology. Let's dive into the four personality types proposed by Isink, the extrovert, the introvert, the stable, and the neurotic. Extroverts, according to Isink, are individuals who are outgoing, energetic, and thrive on social interaction. 
They have a lower baseline level of arousal which means they need more stimulus to feel excited or engaged. On the other hand, introverts who are thoughtful, reserved, and comfortable being alone have a higher baseline arousal level, needing less stimulus to feel engaged. iSync believe that this difference in arousal levels is due to variation in the functioning of our reticular activating system, a network in the brain that plays a key role in consciousness and alertness. Next, we have stable and neurotic personality types. Stable individuals, as the term suggests, are emotionally balanced, calm, and resilient. Neurotic individuals, however, are emotionally unstable, often experiencing mood swings and feelings of anxiety. Isaac associated these traits with the functioning of our limbic system, particularly the amygdala, which is involved in our emotional responses. Isaac's research suggested that those with a more reactive amygdala as seen in neurotic individuals, are more prone to emotional instability, whereas those with a less reactive amygdala, as seen in stable individuals, are more emotionally resilient. It's important to note that Isink's theory doesn't suggest that our biology determines our personality outright. Rather, it proposes that our biology can predispose us to certain personality traits, these traits can then be shaped and influenced by our experiences, environment, and upbringing. In other words, while biology sets the stage, it doesn't write the entire script of our personality. It's a complex interplay of nature and nurture, biology and experience, that ultimately shapes who we are and how we interact with the world around us. So, it seems our biology does play a significant role in shaping our personality, biological and environmental interaction. But is it all about biology? What about the environment? Hans Isink was well aware of this question and he never dismissed the significance of the environment in shaping our personalities. Indeed, while Isink's theory is heavily steeped in biology, he recognized the complex interplay between our genetic makeup and our environment. This is where the age-old debate of nature versus nurture comes into play. Nature, in this context, refers to the biological or genetic predispositions we're born with while nurture pertains to the environmental factors that influence us throughout our lives. Isink argued that our personality is the result of a dynamic interaction between these two factors. Isink's theory suggests that our biological traits create a certain predisposition, a kind of groundwork for our personality. However, how these traits manifest in our behavior can be heavily influenced by environmental factors. For example, a person with a biological predisposition towards extroversion might become more introverted if they grow up in a repressive or restrictive environment. This interaction isn't just a one-way street, though. Our personality, shaped by our biology and environment, can also influence the environments we choose and how we interact with them. An extroverted individual might seek out social situations, further reinforcing their extroversion while an introverted individual might prefer solitary activities, reinforcing their introversion. Isink's theory also highlights how the environment can act as a trigger for certain biological predispositions. For instance, a person with a genetic predisposition towards neuroticism might only exhibit high levels of anxiety or emotional instability in stressful situations. So, while Isink's theory heavily emphasizes the biological basis of personality, it doesn't ignore the role of the environment. It's not a question of either or, but rather a matter of how these two factors interact and influence one another. Indeed, both our genes and our environment work together to mold our personality. It's the intricate dance between our inherited traits and our life experiences that make us who we are. Evaluation of Isink's theory. Isink's theory, like all theories, has its strengths and weaknesses. On one hand, it's praised for its scientific approach. By grounding personality in biology, Isink gave us a framework that's measurable and testable. His work has significantly influenced how we understand and study personality today. On the other hand, Isink's theory has faced criticism. Some argue that it oversimplifies the complexity of human personality by reducing it to just two or three dimensions. Moreover, critics question the validity of Isink's proposed biological basis for personality traits. They argue that the relationship between biology and personality is far more complex than Isink suggests. Controversy also surrounds Isink's theory. His emphasis on heredity and personality has sparked debate about nature versus nurture, and his views have been seen by some as deterministic, 
implying little room for personal growth and change. Despite its limitations, iSync's theory has made a lasting impact on our understanding of personality. Conclusion In the last few minutes, we've taken a whirlwind tour of iSync's biological trait theory. Let's recap. We kicked off with iSync's unique approach to personality that proposes our traits are largely influenced by our biological makeup. We then delved into the structure of personality, exploring how it can be broken down into three major dimensions, extroversion, neuroticism, and psychoticism. We moved on to the fascinating world of personality types and their biological underpinnings. We examined how our genes can shape our behavior, influencing whether we're introverted or extroverted, stable or neurotic, or somewhere in between. Next, we delved into the complex interplay between our biology and our environment. We saw how our genes and our surroundings can influence each other, creating the unique individuals we are today. Lastly, we evaluated iSync's theory, weighing its strengths and weaknesses. Next time you wonder why people behave the way they do, remember, it might just be in their genes. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.